Welcome back to the Glory Hunter save. You join us on international duty, but only briefly, before we then take on Atletico Madrid and Valencia. Uh, two of our most difficult games, we well, certainly the two most difficult games we'll have faced so far in our short tenure at Malaga. We have, over the course of the last two episodes, brought in eight new players. Soon to be nine, because we should be making a free agent CDM signing in today's episode as well. That is the plan. We're still waiting on some scout reports. If you missed any of the last two episodes, check the channel page for them or the playlist, of course. And you'll be able to stay bang up to date with everything that happens in this save. If you're enjoying this RTG project that we're doing at Malaga here, please do drop the video a like rating. So we saw that uh, I know that you guys are still enjoying it. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss out on any more. I probably couldn't have said that much faster, could I? So the situation with England is we need a win in this game against the Czech Republic. So I'm going to interactive sim it. Hope that we get the win. If it looks like we're going to get a draw or a defeat, I'll hop in and try and make sure that we get England qualified for Euro 2028. But only a win is good enough. Poland are two points ahead of us, so even a draw sees us only finish third. Poland have Ukraine at home. So we're travelling away from home to the Czech Republic with England, before then travelling away from home to the Wanda Metropolitano with Malaga, and then we'll have Valencia at home. Then we'll probably end up simming Hatafe, no, playing Hatafe away and simming Espanyol at home at the end of the month. This is going to be tough. I don't know how well this is going to go. Obviously, we desperately want to qualify with England for Euro 2028. If we fail to do so, it would be a big disappointment. But we should be strong enough to get a victory in this game. And that eases the nerves more than you could possibly imagine. Bukayo Saka makes it 1-0 in the fifth minute. England might well, as World Cup champions, be able to do what France did in 98 and 2000 and go from World Cup winners to European Championship winners as well. France did it in Euro 2008 and then the World Cup in 2010 as well, but they did it the other way around. They went Euros World Cup, whereas France went World Cup Euros and we're going to be looking to go World Cup Euros as well. Czech Republic just put that in the back of the net, but you could quite clearly see that the man was offside. So fingers crossed, this will just settle down now. A second goal would be fantastic though, just to ease my nerves even further. As long as it stays at 1-0, we're happy. Go on, bury it. Yes! Dude! England are going to Euro 2028, whether Czech Republic like it or not. It's winner takes all here in Prague. And we're doing the winning and we're taking everything all the way to Euro 2028. England 3, Czech Republic 0. 4! A hat-trick for Bukayo Saka. Let's go! Up the three Lions with a four goals. Come on, into the middle, into the middle, into the middle. 5! C! C! Can't wipe that smile off my face. Although, I think Atletico Madrid might have a damn good go at wiping that smile off my face. Poland win the European group. And England finish second. We've qualified for Euro 2028. And now it's time to go and take on Atletico Madrid in La Liga. This one might be a 6-0, but the other way around to the team that I'm not managing. Weirdly, for the biggest game of the season so far, it didn't show me the La Liga graphics, annoyingly. I am reliably informed that that bug is fixed for new saves. Obviously, we, we might be at a new club, but we're not uh, in a new save. So when we start the Youth Academy RTG, we will get the pre-match graphics for every game that we play. Uh, they're quite good. They've not won a game yet this season. Lost two and drawn one in their opening three games. Andre and Nana in goal. Simakan, Boshali and David Alaba at the back. Uh, Oli Skip holding, actually. Kefren Turam and an 89-rated Vitinha in midfield. Serge Gnabry on the left. Kulusevski on the right. So they have absolutely raided Tottenham here with Skip, Kulusevski and Harry Kane. Harry Kane up top and Yusufa Mukoko at striker as well. They do have a 90-rated Joao Felix still. He, unfortunately for them, is injured on this particular occasion. Obviously, players like Victor Sigankov to call on off the bench and Lucas Amesha as well as a striker. So, um, fully expecting to get my bumhole ripped apart here. 
Uh, young Amy is now making his debut for us. This is his first game. Outside of that, no further debuts to be made yet. I'm starting Baran in played games. I will sim with the 77 rated lone Canadian goalkeeper from Espanyol. We obviously bought him in, hoping to get Baran to go out on loan. That could still happen in January on a short term, and I will, I will look to do that. But for the time being, Baran will play, and Thompson, I think his name is, will, um, will have to be in the sim games. On top of that, Willems, who we tried to get out on loan and couldn't, will stay on the bench, whilst Baraga, the Palestinian striker we brought in on loan, will uh, be in the reserves, and then obviously... In, oh God, it's gonna! Oh God, this is gonna be scary. Um, in January, we'll try again to get Williams to go out on loan, and then Barraga will come in onto the bench. But Yusuf and Coco makes it Atletico Madrid one, Malaga nil. In just the first four minutes, get used to that. It might be happening a little bit more often than we'd like. Patinha tackled by Sora Tiro. Got to get away. Can't really do so that well. Mendes to Gennaro. Shuratiri in there to Roberto. It's a nice turn. And Corridor's in here. And will equalise. Corridor. His first goal of the season for us. I think. Certainly in a played game. He might have scored in that first, four, first game 4-2 win. We had against Cadiz. But we are level here against Atletico Madrid. And that was very, very nicely done indeed. I wasn't sure whether... Or Nana would actually find the save and we'd actually get the angle. But we did and we have scored and we are level. That's pumped by Nana, but it's not pumped well. Nor is that headed well by Gennaro, frustratingly. I did have a teammate there he could have looked for. Kane to Mukoko. Harry Kane again. Nice little dink out wide here to Serge Gnabry. Oh, I couldn't quite get it off him. Kevin will spin Kefren Turum here. But Harry Kane's come back in the tackle. So worried about getting away from Kefren Turam. I ran into another Atleti player. Vitinha, good footwork. Mukoko, Kefren Turam. 2-0 to 1 even. Atletico Madrid. Brilliantly worked goal. Excellent football. And nothing the goalkeeper could do about that one either. Well, we fought hard. I've done more than I thought I was going to already by picking up one goal. But that's beaten the keeper. Plantea. Kevin. Skips away nicely. And look at the run from the left back. Pantea is forward here, and if I can just find the cross. We could have been in for an equalising goal in stoppage time. Roberto with the header. Misses the target. Really good chance, that. Perfect cross. Finds him brilliantly, and no goal. Well, if we only lose by two goals to one, we can't say we haven't had the chances to get a point out of this. Getting away past this Atleti defensive line is proving easier said than done. Ramon. Oh, he says Corridor was in again. Oh, he found a brilliant, if you'll pardon the pun, and I'll try not to make it too much this season. He found a brilliant little corridor to run through and found himself in the box, but couldn't quite get the shot away before the defender got to him. Ramon puts in a good tackle, but the referee's deemed it a foul. Oh, we really could be level at 2-2, couldn't we, in this game so far? With the header in the first half and that chance for Corridor there. This Malaga side, albeit low in rating, they're pretty feisty. They're putting up a challenge this year, it seems. Pilosevsky's off. Oh, thanks, mate. I hear the... What? Why is my guy not taking control of that? Oh! I have a word. I'm a bit annoyed about that one. So we get the tackle in. He's just... He's put his foot there. And then Makoko's just run off with it. That one feels a bit cheap. That one feels a bit cheap. 3-1 Atletico Madrid. I guess when you're a big club, things like that go for you. Refereeing decisions might go in your favour as well. Ah, that's annoying. We really genuinely could have had something from this game. And that gives us faith that we can absolutely avoid the drop this season. But moments like that are going to have to go for us if we're to be comfortable in avoiding the drop. This is going to be Atletico Madrid's first win of the season. 
and it certainly won't be their last. I would like to pick up some points today in the league, though. Not expecting to beat Valencia, but certainly against Hatafe and Espanyol, we could perhaps expect to pick up a draw in each. Maybe even a win in the home game. We're going to lose this one by three goals to one. We're going to lose this one by four goals to one. Vitinha adds the final blow. Again, a bit harsh. We get a block on that pass. And it falls straight back to Atleti again. It's a good finish. Take nothing away from that. Their highest rated player on the pitch at 89. So our Felix is 90. That's unsavable. But Atleti have got lucky today. On another given Sunday, we might well have scored two or three goals in that game. And they might well have not had the fortune that they, they did experience. Oh, I tell you what, I, even though it looks like we've been hammered there, I'm not too disappointed with that game. On to Valencia. Oh, Augsburg. Look to loan Baran. Yes, please. Not a loan to buy. But if you could do a short-term loan from January onwards, that would suit us down the ground. That would be absolutely what we're after. Now, I am either able to sign someone that is going to be an older player to sit in reserve and come in and just do a job, like a Tebo or Congo, or I could sign someone younger, like Nezhevic, who is potentially going to grow, but they're not going to get first team football because have got players in that position already. So I'm probably going to go for either Etebo or Yimi Congo. I mean, Benede is decent, isn't he? We'll try and get him for as little as we can. We're going to go for Antoine Benede as our rotation CDM. He wants an important squad role. I'll try and get him to sign rotation. I guarantee you won't. So we'll have to give him important, but never mind. Important is fine. We can deal with that. A three-year contract length. I'll be happy enough with that because we'll be looking to improve on him. Eleven and a half million pound release clause. I'll try and up that if I can towards the fourteen and a half to fifteen million pound mark, which they are rather well, evidently unwilling to negotiate on whatsoever. Twelve and a half million pound. All right. And then wage-wise, I'll offer him like fifteen, and he might actually be willing to negotiate from there. Fourteen thousand pounds a week. Yep. Cheers then. We have a new CDM. Antoine Bernede comes in. To play initially a squad role at CDM. Although he is probably, almost certainly, higher rated than Gennaro. Indeed he is. How old is Gennaro? 29. Well, maybe then Gennaro becomes my rotation and Bernede goes into the starting lineup. I'll be happy enough with that. And I'll take Rico out of there. Yeah, that probably makes sense. Take Rico out of there and we'll put uh, Gennaro in. And I think that's a good signing. I'm happy enough with that. Benede will actually start then. And Gennaro will be the ageing player that will be replaced. They're both 28 and 29 respectively, Benede and Gennaro. So I'm pleased with that. Okay, good. The first team has strengthened yet further. And I'll show you actually those players on the shortlist that we've got there that we've got scout reports back for now. So Kelleher is 80. Nezhev not Nezhev it's Jimmy Greaves. Jimmy Greaves. Jacob Greaves is 77. And I'm intrigued, very much intrigued, by Warren Bondo as a potential signing moving forward as well. I'd be pretty keen on him for next season. So we'll keep an eye on him. Sanas, sorry, N Nanasi, Sebastian Nanasi also looks like he could be really decent as a winger. So I'd be, obviously, his crossing's terrible, but. I don't play with a cam at present, so I could use him out wide. Uh, Ike Bravo could be a good loan option next year. But he's gone back to Barcelona. He was at Troyes on loan. Oh, yeah, no, it says he is currently out on loan. It's just not showing it in the squad hub for some reason. And uh, Garrido is the young guy whose contract was expiring, but they might have offered him a new one. They have offered him a new one. He could be a player we could look to next season then. Initially, his contract was running out, and they wouldn't let me loan him. Now I can loan him. And... Uh, I would have wanted to do that in January, in the summer, sorry, if I could, but never mind. Roberto and Corridor have been decent enough for us so far. Hopefully, they can score some goals against Valencia. A Willem's loan offer. Good. It's a loan to buy, which we'll negotiate to just a loan and we'll try short term. Valencia. Maximiano in goal at 85. Dano at right back. Akanji, Lindelof and Jesus Vasquez in their fullback. They're playing either a 4-1, 4-1 or... 
more of a, a 4 5 1 with uh, Sinistera on the right at 86, and Donny van der Beek, Jacob Ramsey, and Alcaraz in midfield. Emil Smith throw at 87 on the left, and an 86 rated Amin Gawiri up top. Valencia have a very capable side. Their defensive line isn't that strong. I'm just seeing how good Thompson is in goal now. Just to kind of figure out what to expect later in the season. Hopefully he's an improvement on Baran. Time will tell. But Baran now looking to go out on loan to Augsburg and hopefully Willems will confirm his loan spell sooner rather than later. He's in with throw in the box causing me issues right from the off. Conceded inside four against Atleti. We've managed to avoid that here. Ramon to Pantea. we we'll go short there to Kevin. And here's Corridor. Oh, that opened up nicely. Even more so for sure. A T-rate. Good block by Manuel Akanji to a come across and stop it. Well, it fell for Atleti. That led to goals. It fell for me there, but it hasn't led to a goal. Corridor square it. Oh, there was a man there waiting to just tuck that home. I think it was Roberto, my other striker. We could have been 1-0 up in this game. We really could have been, but we're not yet. Vasquez, Van der Beek, intercepted by Mendes. Nicely done. Both fullbacks have been really good since we brought them in. Very pleased with the work done by Mendes and Pantea. Sora Tire held that on its way. What a goal this would be. Ramon Enriquez, please, for the love of God, put that in the back of the net. That was gorgeous football. Even Ted's on the sidelines trying to kick it in as well. We said we'd try and play a little bit of tiki taka football. That was it at its best, and it didn't work. Checker Ramsey's a bit bloody quick. I mean, Gawiri, Ramsey, Alcaraz, they're trying to play some tiki taka of their own. Well, it's falling kindly for opposition players once again. Get the interception in, and. Oh. I've got literally nowhere to go other than to try and play a pass there. If I try and turn, I get tackled. All I've got to do, the only option I can try and do is to squeeze out a pass. Evidently, they're number 18. Read what I was trying to do and put a stop to it. Roberto, Corridor. Oh, Maximiano comes out. We're not getting much luck in front of goal at one end. And if we had any sort of luck behind us... It's definitely bad luck at the back. 1-0 Valencia. It's Alcaraz and Sinistera. He's come this way. I didn't expect that. Press from Valencia was quite high there. He's won it back again. Sinistera with a through ball. Gawiri with a little double step over. Sinistera through and Alcaraz buries it. Thought it might have been offside there. Valencia again. I mean, these games are scoreline-wise going as we would expect them to. 4-1 against Atleti. 2-0 here against Valencia in the opening half an hour. But on the balance of play, we've been competitive. Wellington Dano again. Smith Rowe. I mean, Gawiri, Smith Rowe. Good tackle. Gawiri stepped in there to win that back. Some of their forward players are showing exceptional um, <sighs> exceptional interception skills. Just not... I'm so used to, with my higher rated players, being able to play a pass like that and then turn away from the man in the middle can't do that anymore. I'm not going to be able to do that for a couple of seasons, so I'm going to have to relearn how I'm playing and adjust. We've played some nice stuff with this Malaga side so far, though. It just hasn't yet, in today's episode, resulted in the goals that it deserves. All we've got to do is avoid relegation for this first season. Get out. But so far, I'm happy with how the side are playing. We're just getting a little bit unfortunate at the back is in fact opening them up a little bit now if Corridor can find the pass and that's where we lack the quality and that sort of that sort of break away I don't have the quality to play that killer through ball which is why the sh shorter smaller tiki taka stuff is actually probably going to be our best method of scoring goals at this stage of the uh, proceedings with Malaga because those those pinpoint passes that you need in scenarios like that just aren't going to come Ramon will switch this out wide to Soritiro. Hopefully he can bring this down ahead of the defender. He brought it down. It's just the defender got in and won it back again. Donny van der Beek. Luis Sinistera. Andres does well. 
Caro has been rock solid at centre back. I have to be honest, really, really good. Benedo has been decent as well. That was my mistake to give the ball away. There, Kevin will look down the line here. It's just Valencia's press and defensive positioning is very good so far. I mean, Gawiri, the obvious pass is the one through the gap there to Smith Rowe. And that's a third for them. Valencia will win this one. Kevin and Corridor do link up nicely. And he's in here, Roberto. He does have a five-star weak foot as well, so I can use that left. Lindelof sticking with, though. I don't know as I have anyone, really, that I can aim for for corners like this yet. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, he put his body on the line. I don't know who it was that went up for that. Whoever it was, it was full-blooded and absolutely committed. Roberto's up. That's going to fall kindly for them and get cleared away. Benede is going to bring that down. Ramon, little ball back. Ah, oh, it was meant for number 19, Pantea there, and didn't quite find him. As has been the nature of the games against Valencia and Atleti. But you've seen the quality both sides had in their starting lineup. And when I've got 73 rated centre backs, it's perhaps not a surprise that we're conceding four goals against those two sides. Valencia make it 4 0. And neither scoreline reflects the overall balance of play, I feel. It flatters the opponents. We've been better than 4 1 and 4 0 defeats. I really genuinely believe that. And we could maybe still have a consolation, but we won't. It'll be 4 0 Valencia, but with games against Hetafe and Espanyol coming up. Those we could get points in. Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that my international contract was up for renewal. See, this is the sort of thing that should be in manager mode for club at club level. You should have a contract length in your club contract. That would be the logical thing. There's obviously the mechanic in the game for it with internationals. So. Let's have that in club football, shall we please, EA? That'd be lovely. So, contract with England extended. Willems is going to go out on loan in the short term to Feyenoord as well. Cracking. So, even though the plan didn't come to fruition in the summer, for January, it's going to work well. I am going to have to rotate a little bit for this next game against Hatafa. We've dropped down to 13th in the table now. Could really do with picking up a point or two in these games against Hatafe and Espanyol. And hopefully... This one might be the start of it. Hetafe line up with a frustratingly really good side. They have two 80 rated players. The rest is 82 and above. Georgie Mamadish Vili in goal, who I think is six foot six. Nico Williams at right back. Matteo Lovato, Emre Chan, and Adilon Kasunu at centre back with Lucas Barrera at left back. Midfield of 82 rated Arnemeyer an 80-rated Bazur, and then an 85-rated Mikel Marino. And then up top, 83, Marco Lazetic, and an 82, Moise Diagne, who's a regen. On the bench, nowhere near as much, but that's starting 11. Well, I was hoping to get points against Atafe. I don't think I will. Gomez gets to start alongside Corridor. Lorenzo is into the starting lineup as well. Jimenez and Olmo also playing. It's not Danny Olmo at left-back, it's... A different Olmo. And Baran back in the starting lineup. Both he and Thompson have conceded four today. So we might as well use Baran whilst he's here. And then he can go out on loan and continue to get first team football exposure at Feyenoord. This is on paper the easier game of the three that we've played today. But you can quite easily see why I'm probably still going to lose this. Judging by the quality they've got. And five back as well is going to be tough. Is he onside there, Diagne? He is not. Oh, nearly. That's the sort of thing that's been going against me. And teams have been getting the interception and going on and scoring a goal from that. We very nearly opened them up there. Hatafe are pressing similar to how Valencia did. So they might be mm, there for the taking on the odd occasion defensively. But I have a feeling it is only going to be the odd occasion that we might have the chance to open them up. Nico Williams on the overlap here from right wing back, as you might expect him to be in this sort of formation. Victor Olmo doing well. He's just as good as uh, our starting right back in Pantea, Victor Olmo. So 
I don't really feel like I've weakened my defensive line by having him in there. Kevin inside to Corridor to Gomez, who is not as good as Roberto, but he's still decent. Gomez uh, enjoys using him in the brief time he's had on the pitch so far. Danny Lorenzo's a player I've not used yet, so hoping that he's quite good. He's 76 rated, the same as the other guy that plays in that position for me, so there's no reason why he shouldn't be decent. That's a good cross by Olmo, but it's not going to find a teammate. 22 minutes in, we are playing some nice football, but no reward for it yet. And Digne is in behind here. Support from Mikel Marino. Back there to Barrera. Thank you. No, it's still fallen for them. Thank you. Corner. Let's keep it a nil-nil till half-time, please. Let's fight hard for a clean sheet here. We shipped eight goals in the last two games. So to come into this one and keep them out for the full 90 would be very, very impressive indeed. So far, we're halfway there. Everybody died there. Danny Lorenzo. Bernede. Look at that bank of five. It's just so hard to get past. Like, where do you go? I'm trying to play little ticky-tacker passes, but even longer-ranging passes won't work. I'm forced that wide, but then I don't have the height in the middle. Oh, that could fall. I mean, it's Philly with a punch. Yes! Danny Lorenzo! I don't have the height in the middle to win the headers. I just got lucky there that the keeper came out and flapped at it and hasn't gotten himself back in position. Come on then, Malaga. Why is he not caught that? He's then tripped over two men that are near him. And Danny Lorenzo's header is just far enough away from the big rangy arms of the Georgian goalkeeper. Yes, Danny Lorenzo! Malaga lead away from home against Hetafe. Free kick in a position that is a little bit too far out to shoot, really. And I don't want to play this short because you see the number three just stood there. So... I'm waiting for him to just bugger off before I then play that short. And he avoids intercepting him intercepting it. Sure, it's Ray played in. There is someone at the back post here. And the cross is not quite good enough. Amy might have been able to nod that home. Albeit he's a centre-back. But he's got the height and the range and the heading accuracy for defensive situations. Corridor plays that out wide to Kevin here. And I've got men in the middle again. But Kevin's turned brilliantly. Kevin! Oh! <laughs> Oh, that wasn't very good. Bazour. Short to Mikel Marino. Only 20 minutes or so to go. Don't take any risks. Chairs, please. That's a lovely ball. Oh, go on then. You're in. Kevin. Kevin! No, Mamanishvili again. Good header. Oh, is that a foul? No. Kevin! Please, mate. Score that. No, it could have been two. It really could have been two. And we could have been right in the game. And away from them at 2-0 up. And guaranteed three points. Well up. Young Amy. Ah, not well up. Whoever that was. Victor Olmo receives the ball. And we'll just keep it now. Corridor is there. We do have changes waiting to be made. Take our time coming forward. Take a time, take a time, take a time. There's a bit of space here for Kevin. And he'll find Corridor. And through there is Gomez, who's on his favoured left foot. Yes! Get in! A win for Malaga, surely now, in the 79th minute. It's Malaga 2. Ga Good. I was going to say Malaga 2, Gallagher 2. It's Malaga 2, Katafe 0. Brilliant finish. He is the only left footer in the side. And thankfully, his left foot's pretty decent. Goal! Goal, 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 goal. That's going to be three points for Hatafe. No, it's not going to be three points for Hatafe. It's going to be three points for Malaga. We've not drawn a game so far this season. We either win or we lose. No! Oh, Baran with a brilliant double save. We'll stay at 2-0. The clean sheet is intact. Maya. Oh, couldn't get there. Lazetic. No. No, por favor. No. No. No, please. No, please. 
2-1. It's just what we've got that second goal. Three minutes to hold on. Gomez can't get there. It's a terrible pass from the right back. But Benede steps in and does brilliantly. That's what we brought him in to do. Here comes Fomba down the wing. My two strikers ran into each other. Let's just take our time. Let's just play the ball about and ensure that we don't lose it. Let's get the win. Fomba, he might have been offside. There he was. So that will bring the final whistle. It's a 2-1 win. No clean sheet. But threes. Punta. Yes. Three points. Let's go. That's nine so far this season from our six games played. 3-1, three, three lost. Not to worry about that at all. Very, very, very pleased with how the season has started here at Malaga. The squad is vastly improved from where it was when we first signed. And the team are playing good football and showing good promise. Tenth in the table so far. I think my aim this year, if we look like we're going to be comfortable in the league, then we're going to really make a go of it in the Copa del Rey. We've got Espanyol to come. We might, yeah, add some more points to our tally. Baran is going to go out on loan to Augsburg. Reese is going to go out on loan to Karagumruk. And Joaquin Arias, who is shite, uh, is going to go out on loan to Ingolstadt. Right. Espanyol at home next. Oh, scout report Dan Neal. 78. He's not bad. Not bad at all at Sunderland, but we're not interested in him right now. Thank you very much. Javier Jimenez wants to play against Espanyol. I am sorry, my friend. Uh, it is going to be Caro and Amy who start ahead of you. Right. Espanyol in the simmed game. Uh, I could check to see if their starting lineup strong enough. I'm going to, on this odd occasion, trust it. And Dombele in their midfield, by the way. Malaga versus Espanyol. They've got a car in goal. They've got a Willie at centre back. Oh, and they were nearly 1 0 down. No. Oh, I could see it building. Magopa gives Espanyol a 1 0 lead. Well, we know we either win or we lose so far this season. So if we do to do the winning, we are going to have to score twice. Oh, it's given away. We need to get the ball off them. No! We have got the ball off them because we got a kick off because they've scored a second. Matt Goppa with his and Espanyol's second. That's going to be a defeat for us at home at La Rosaleda. Well, we win or we lose. We don't draw. You know there's going to be drama one way or the other. And you know not to expect a nil-nil because someone always scores in a Malaga game, it seems. Unfortunately, on this occasion, we're not doing any of the scoring. Hatafe scored a late one to pull it back and make it a bit more respectable. We don't get that luxury on this occasion. We had enough chances in the game. We just couldn't turn the ball home, unfortunately. So seven games, 3-1, four lost so far this season. Sees us sit 13th in the La Liga table. Just three points above the drop. No, sorry. I saw us as Cadiz there. Five points above the drop. That's a bit more safe, isn't it? Actually, only... Two points off seventh. Okay. Well, the expectation is that maybe we can go on a cup run this year. And if we can finish top half with Malaga, that would be very pleasing indeed. But at the minute, I have no idea what's going to happen with our league position. We could win loads of games. We could lose loads of games. We've Real Madrid and Sociedad in the next episode, as well as Celta Vigo, Betis and Levante. Then it's Barcelona, Villarreal and Bilbao. That's going to get tasty. Uh, well, expect a battering against Real, but hopefully we can lose it by less than four. I'll probably lose it by more than four, though. Right, that'll do for today. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully you're continuing to enjoy our time here at Malaga. I very much am. Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you won't miss any further content. And I'll see you next time.